question then before us is no longer the nature of the challenge. The question is our capacity to meet it. For while the reality of climate change is not in doubt, I have to be honest, as the world watches us today, I think our ability to take collective action is in doubt right now. And it hangs in the balance. I believe we can act boldly and decisively in the face of a common threat. That's why I come here today, not to talk, but to act. Now, and America is going to continue on this course of action to mitigate our emissions and to move towards a clean energy economy, no matter what happens here in Copenhagen. We think it is good for us as well as good for the world. But we also believe that we will all be stronger, all be safer, all be more secure if we act together. That's why it is in our mutual interest to achieve a global accord in which we agree to certain steps and to hold each other accountable to certain commitments. We must have a mechanism to review whether we are keeping our commitments and exchange this information in a transparent manner. These measures need not be intrusive or infringe upon sovereignty. They must, however, ensure that an accord is credible and that we're living up to our mutual obligations. Without such accountability, any agreement would be empty words on a page. We must have financing that helps developing countries adapt, particularly the least developed and most vulnerable countries, to climate change. America will be a part of a fast start funding that will ramp up to $10 billion by 2012. And yesterday, Secretary Hillary Clinton, my Secretary of State, made it clear that we will engage in a global effort to mobilize $100 billion in financing by 2020 if, and only if, it is part of a broader accord that I've just described. <laughs> These international discussions have essentially taken place now for almost two decades. And we have very little to show for it other than an increase, acceleration of the climate change phenomena. The time for talk is over. This is the bottom line. We can embrace this accord, take a substantial step forward, continue to refine it and build upon its foundation. We can do that, and everyone who is in this room will be part of a historic endeavor, one that makes life better for our children and our grandchildren. Or we can choose delay. <laughs> we are ready to get this done today. But there has to be movement on all sides. His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Lesotho, Your Excellency.